In today's video, I show you how through blood, and nipples were bleeding, sweat, oh, shit, this marathon shit, honestly. and tears, I I'm rethinking this whole thing. I went from running three miles to a marathon, but if I don't do it in under four hours and 20 minutes, I have to shave my head. This whole journey started about three months ago when after I left school, I was rethinking a lot of things in my life. I was going through a major identity crisis and was struggling to even realize what things I enjoyed. Things that I thought I loved doing, I wasn't so sure anymore. Like running, running's a great example. Do I actually enjoy this? Or do I do it because, I don't know, I feel like I should be doing it or that it makes me better than other people? I don't know, but I'd like to find out. I knew that simply committing to running more often wouldn't be the motivation I needed. I might run consistently for a few weeks, maybe even a month, but at the end of the day, I knew it wouldn't be enough for me to make running a consistent part of my life just by my own motivation. And so I decided to just jump into the deep end. I signed up for a marathon, paid my $100 fee, and decided I was gonna dedicate the next four months of my life to training for it. I downloaded a free app called Run With Hal that would outline a lot of the training I would be doing. Most weeks consisted of four runs, two baseline runs that were between three and five miles, one longer marathon pace, and then one even longer long run at slightly slower than marathon pace. Additionally, there was one hour of cross-trained each week, which I usually did weightlifting, played sports with friends, yoga, or even just walked. I found the first week of baseline runs pretty easy. I was excited for training, but that quickly turned to nerves once I had to do my first long run. Well, shit. Today is the first long run got 11 miles ahead of me, but thankfully I was at the store the other day. They got prime. This is exactly what I need to get me through. Actually, let's do, let's do a taste test. So with my prime safely stored, I headed out on what up to this point would be my longest ever run. Show on the road. left my prime on the other side of the bridge. Fuck. <sighs> she I'm cruising. Oh. Oh. Thank God. Oh. seven and three quarter miles in. It's amazing what one week of running can do. Cause last week when I did nine miles, I was really pissing myself by this point. And right now I actually feel all right. So let's go finish this last three and a bit miles. Let's see how it goes. One hour later. That run took a turn for the worse. With about two and a half miles left, my phone died, which meant I didn't know how to get home. So, Instead of a 11 mile run and it being a 12 mile run, the first eight miles I was cruising. I'm like, this marathon shit? I could do this right now. I don't need to train. Need to train. Stop it! Then I started going uphill. And then I wanted to piss my pants again. But with that, my first ever long run was in the books and I was over one of the largest hurdles of this whole experience. This was the longest run I'd ever done in my life, so I not only felt accomplished just to do that, but I also felt inspired to keep pushing myself until I could do the full marathon. If I hadn't done this run, I very easily could have given up right then and there. However, this confidence and optimism didn't last long. It's another rainy day in paradise. I really did not think this whole thing through when I started this training a few weeks ago, but it is winter. So I should have been prepared for all this 
gross weather, but it really makes me not want to run or do anything, really. So today I'm doing another long run, first long run on the treadmill. Very worried that I'm going to be bored out of my mind. Um, but we got to do it. While it was nice to avoid the weather, running the treadmill felt like a true workout as opposed to something that I did for fun. I would come home hoping for the rain to be gone the next day so I could get back to running outside, but instead I was greeted with snow. So it would be back to the treadmill and back to the grind. 12 miles done. That was one of the hardest ones in my entire life. Oh, fuck this marathon shit, honestly. Honestly, I wasn't even gonna show this because I was a little embarrassed, but my fucking nipples were bleeding. Damn, the nips and I have been through a lot together, but never that. But apart from the nips, the, the run was fucking hard, but I, I'm really glad I did it. Because of weather the last few days, I haven't even done any of the runs. I skipped two days, and honestly, I was going to skip again today, but I went and I did it, and I grinded it out, and I'm glad I did. I feel good now. Um... But holy sh At this point, I was around the one month mark, which unfortunately is usually when I move on to the next thing, regardless of how complete the last thing was. It's not something that I'm proud of, and it's part of why I committed to running a marathon in the first place. I wish this could be a story of how I just magically overcame that and committed to this four month thing and lasted the whole four months, but it's not. Confession time. It has been a month and a half since I have run. We're just about a month and a half away from when this marathon's supposed to be, and I have fumbled the bag. I was visiting one of my friends abroad. Sorry, I'm just filming that ass. I don't want to forget. I had a vacation with my family. I had the flu. It was uh it was a s series of events that allowed me to give up basically it's been eating at me for weeks now but i'm ready to get back into the flow of things so i'm gonna go out hit the treadmill run five miles i'm supposed to run 20 miles this weekend don't think that's gonna happen but we're gonna give it a shot tonight and see if we still have it in us to run even five miles. I'd always had the fear in the back of my mind that something like this would happen, as I'm sure most of us do when we're trying to achieve something in our personal lives. But if there's one thing I wanted to take away from this experience, it's the resiliency to get back to work just when you think it's too late and when you want to give up. time for for my first run my first long run back i got this for my birthday so i'm a certified running dork i'm supposed to go 20 miles today i think there's a fat chance of that happening but oh, i'm 12 miles away from home i was feeling great on this run and decided to put myself 12 miles away from my house, which means if I do the math correctly, I have to go 12 miles back to my house. I'm an idiot. I'm so stupid. And I have class in two and a half hours. So I really gotta get home. Mm -hmm. Your routes and don't 
Don't be crazy. <sighs> lesson learned, I guess. This lesson was learned even harder four miles later. I just crossed that bridge, and this is the first time in my life that I thought I couldn't do it. I'm rethinking this whole thing, and I'm not even saying that for dramatic effect. I genuinely don't know if I can do this. My whole body's tingling. It was not good. And so the ride of shame back home, courtesy of my wonderful girlfriend, marked the end of what would be my last long run before the marathon. I had a lot of mixed emotions after this run. On one hand, I had run 19 miles, which was a massive achievement. But on the other hand, it had taken literally everything that I had. I told myself I still had two weeks left to train, but then came a setback I thought would ruin any chance I had left. Having COVID sent me into a massive mental health spiral. I was nearing the end of my academic quarter and missing school had me genuinely worrying about failing a class for the first time in my life. On top of that, I had no idea how far back COVID would set me physically. And so all of that sent me into a pretty horrible mental state. Luckily, I had an amazing support group of friends and family who helped me get through it. Take it from me, if you're going through something, no matter how small or stupid you think your problems are, please reach out to those around you. I know you might feel like a burden, but just think if the situation was flipped, you would obviously help them. So they would be happy to help you as well. So don't be afraid. After overcoming COVID, I had only run twice going into race day. The night before the race, I was terrified I was going to come up short. I knew that this was going to be the toughest challenge I had ever faced. The only question was if I had it in me to keep going. If I had the resiliency and the heart to put one foot in front of the other until I made it to the finish line. Oh, and if I didn't finish it in under 4 hours and 20 minutes, I was going to lose my hair. That was a fun little incentive I set myself. We're here on race day. It's cold and I'm nervous. Thankfully I was able to unload some weight, if you know what I mean, in the bathroom. So I'm feeling light, lean, and mean. Let's do or die. Two, one, go! And so just like that, we were off. And then just like that, I was walking. You see, when signing up for the marathon, I pretty much only had one criteria, and that was when the marathon was being held. I wanted to start right away, and the app I was using said that four months was a perfect amount of time to train, so this one fell perfectly within the time frame I was looking the for. The marathon also boasted wonderful trail running and beautiful scenery, and I was like, yeah, that sounds great. And it was beautiful and wonderful trails. However, little did I know that I had selected the second most difficult marathon in the state of Washington. Let's just say hilly course was a bit of an understatement. Sections of the course were like you were rock climbing, however you were also sliding back down the hill while you were rock climbing because it was so muddy. And so it didn't take long before the self-doubt really started to set in. Five miles in, I knew I had no chance of breaking 420. So it then quickly became just about finishing the race. But then while asking myself why the hell I would want to do this in the first place, I remembered. Do I actually enjoy this? Or do I do it because, I don't know, I feel like I should be doing it? I don't know, but I'd like to find out. And with that in mind, I even started enjoying the run. Don't get me wrong, I was pushing myself with everything I had. But looking around, I had something that I hadn't had up until this point, and that was belief. And that was all I needed to cross the finish line. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Man, this was such an amazing experience. If you guys have any bucket list items, I highly recommend just go check them off, honestly. If you wanna see me doing more of my life's bucket lists, then stay tuned to the channel. Go check out what other videos I have out, and yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. 
Oh, come on. Do you really remember about that little thing? Fine, I'll do it. Ah, this oh. is the last time to back out. Nope. Okay. Nope. Somebody okay. do it. Just, okay. Oh I'll go. I'll go. Ah. I'll, I'll go. I'll go. I'll go. I'll go. I'll go. Ah. Is it doing? Yeah, it's yeah. doing. It's doing. It's, it's doing. Oh my. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. This is awesome. Alright, that's it for real this time. Thank you guys for watching the video. At least drop me a like for the dedication, will ya?